Okay, uh, Austin Meyer, uh, Mike's yada yada yada. Okay, so today this is called the what? TQ6 throttle quadrant, mm -hmm. made by who? Virtual Fly. Okay, the Virtual Fly TQ6. And this really should apply to all throttle quadrants. What I want you to go over, I think, because we want to talk about how to set up reversers and beta and all. Right. That junk. Okay, so here's the thing, though. What you want me to do only makes sense if there's a little detent near the bottom. The Logitech you see, one, the $59 Logitech has a D10. Near the bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then good. This applies to that as well. Okay, okay. so today we're, we're using the TQ6 by Logitech, I think you said? No, no, no Virtual Fly. Virtual Fly. It's going to be how bad my short-term memory is. Okay, um, but it applies to other things as well. Uh, it's basically throttles where you have a detent near the bottom and you want to be able to operate the uh, Pratt & Whitney PT6, okay? See, here's how you do it. You get this thing and you go to the joystick screen and let's do the easiest ones first, okay? Let's do the mixture or the red knob, all right? Edit response curve. Okay, and basically that's just like a linear, uh, basically just a, a linear response. Right now, Tyler has it set up to cat mole ROM for some reason. You might, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I, I just made it linear rather than cat mole ROM, but you know, that's fine. It's just a curve fit. But as you see, when you're all the way forward, you're up there, and then when you're back here, uh, you're not quite at cutoff. Oh, this is interesting. You see, you got the cutoff here. So here's how the red knobs work in real Pratt & Whitney engines. When you're down here, you're at low idle. And the engine's just kind of going When you're up here, you're at high idle. The engine's going and it's idling a lot faster. And then there's a little detent. Now, in the, I guess uh, there's no... I don't recall feeling a detent in the, in the throttle quadrant of my airplane. But when you go all the way back, it's shut off, okay? It's shut down. And so what we did here, there is a little detent here that you can feel. And so up here is just the top of the travel. Down here, it's not in cutoff, okay? Drag the little thing here to not be in uh, the cutoff zone. You want the cutoff below wherever you are, you know, at it, your, your lower D10 if you have one. Then when you go all the way back, boom, you're at zero. You see, Mike, do you have any questions about that one? No, I think that makes sense. There's one question you should have, I think, which is what's the difference between low and high idle and why does anybody care and why do you have that? Have I ever told you that in any of our videos? We have talked about that. Do you remember the, the answer? High idle is necessary to run like the air conditioning. Exactly, that's right. The high, that. Yes, you remember the high idle is to run the air conditioning. We well, you know uh, that's important. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's more important than you think, partially to keep the airplane cool, but partially because if you're low idle, you oh, have the, the air conditioning on. Too hot, right? right, the engine bogs down, and you have all this fuel going in, but you don't have enough air going in to cool. And then that, that fuel without enough of an air insulating layer around it, the heat reaches out to the sides of the engine wall and destroys the engine. So, you know, people say, oh, the Pratt & Whitney, it's bulletproof. Well, in a way it is. But on the other hand, if you turn on your air conditioning at too low and idle, you'll destroy the engine. How bulletproof is that? So in a way it's bulletproof, in a way it's not. You have to know how to operate it. I will say this though, I've operated my Pratt & Whitney now for uh, over 500 hours. And um, it, for me, I, I admit it has, it has been bulletproof. But I've had to operate it properly. But um, I operated in uh, Burlington, Vermont during the polar bomb, where it was like you know 30 degrees below zero or something like that. And I mean, the engine, I mean, it didn't even care. I mean, it was like, as far as the airplane was concerned, it was a 50 degree spring day. Is it more <laughs> I mean, efficient when it's that cold or less? Oh, it loves the cold. Oh, because the whole, the enemy of the oh, Pratt & Whitney 6. It's denser air. Yeah, exactly. The enemy of a Pratt & Whitney PT6 is heat. Because you're dumping in the fuel, you're heating it up, it gets so hot, the heat will destroy the engine, the air gets so thin, when, right? When the air is hot, it all expands, and so it's thinner, and the engine can't make any torque, and the only way to get any torque is to dump in more fuel, which brings the temperature up even more. Temperature is the absolute enemy of the turbine, uh, Pratt & Whitney being no exception. They love the cold. Okay, um, all right, so that's mixture. Now we're gonna go to prop. Prop, pretty dang straightforward. Again, Tyler kind of defaults to Catmull ROM interpolation because a programmer will say Catmull can do anything. But let's 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 just do linear. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, let's see. This is prop two. The the order here seems a little backwards in the way it's listed. But uh, and prop one. So basically, what you'll do is all the way forward 
is uh, you know all the way forward. Then you can come back to the little detent and make that little detent just above feather. Okay, make you can grab the little feather thing, and as as the the blue knobs are sitting on the detent, uh, you're not in the feather mode yet. Then when you go after the detent. Boom, that's when you go to feather. And that's when the prop will go whoom, like that and just feather out. Now again, in my airplane, I actually don't have detents. I just don't pull the knob all the way back unless I want to feather the prop. And I don't pull the mixture all the way back unless I want to shut down the engine. So my airplane doesn't happen to have detents here. But, um, or if they do, I've never even noticed it and I've just gotten used to operating them out of instinct. But, you know, it doesn't matter. If this is your minimum RPM and this is your low idle, pull them back, you know, more to feather the prop, pull it back more to shut down the engine. You know, so even if it's not exactly what the detent feels like in the real airplane, the whole idea of the way it's operated is certainly there. And I'm sure there are airplanes that have detents. Um, okay. Now, if you wouldn't yes. use this in um, the Baron, uh -huh. what, these, the same throttle, uh -huh. what, how, what, what effect right. does it have? Right. Excellent question. Okay, let's talk about a Beach Baron, reciprocating engine rather than a turbine. So this still controls the propeller RPM. This still feathers a prop. So this is exactly the same. No difference at all in the blue knob. The difference is the red knob. So the turbine pumps in fuel and that spins the thing. However much air it gets, it gets. Reciprocating is completely different. With reciprocating, the air is sucked in by each rotation of the engine and the throttle plate, right? The throttle is adjusting the throttle plate, which admits air. This controls the ratio of fuel to air. You see? So the reciprocating engine, the throttle opens and closes the throttle plate to admit air, and then this controls the fuel-air ratio. The turbine doesn't have a throttle plate. The black knob just dumps in fuel, and whatever happens, happens. And so this is nothing but a high idle or a low idle or a shutoff. I mean, it almost could just be a three-position switch, really, just about. Um, but with the, it's, it's the fuel-air ratio with the reciprocating engine. And so if you want plenty of fuel or a rich mixture, then you punch it up like this. And if you want very little fuel and plenty of air for super lean operation for maximum efficiency, then you pull it right back to a lean ratio of fuel to air. And by the time you pull it back to a certain degree, there's so little fuel, it just goes it's just a bump. Off, yeah, yeah, and then shuts off because there's just not enough fuel making anymore to balance the air. So the fact you fiddled with the part way down low there for your PT6 really won't have an effect on a reciprocating engine because it'll shut off by then. Anyway. Yeah, it'll shut off and somewhere the near the bottom. Too, right? Yeah, somewhere near the bottom it's going to go to feather, and somewhere near the bottom it's going to go to, uh, it's going to shut off. Now let me say this, I'm not sure that, uh, not all reciprocating engines have featherable propellers. Like on a Baron, a twin, yeah, they absolutely will feather a prop. If the engine shut down, you have to feather it to reduce drag. But on my Columbia 400 that I used to fly, single engine recip, the prop would not completely feather, I guarantee you. You pull this thing all the way back and all it'll do is try and set the pitch for kind of a low RPM. It wouldn't go and feather straight into the air, would not. So there's difference between airplanes, between single engines and props. But um, the bottom line is maximum RPM, minimum RPM, feathered, high idle, low idle, shut down for the turbine, or rich mixture, Nice mixture, lean mixture. Oh crap, there's not enough fuel shut down for the recip, for the recip engine, okay? And uh, for the setup, just, uh, yeah, for the mixture, the response curve is just make sure your cutoff is below your detent um, so you don't just shut down the engine by mistake. And uh, for the prop, make sure your feather is below your detent so you don't feather the prop by mistake. You have to come over the detent to feather the prop and over the detent to feather your mixture. And if you learn to operate the engine like this, it's not exactly like a Baron because I don't think a Baron has these detents at all. It's not exactly like a Pratt & Whitney PT6 because I don't feel those detents in my airplane at all, but it's pretty damn close from an operational standpoint. And if you learn to operate the airplane this way, then you're ready to go into a real airplane and you'll quickly get it uh, as far as how the, the real airplane operates. Now let's do the hardest one. Those, those are the softballs. Now we'll do the ones that's a little trickier, the throttle. Let's do throttle one, which for some reason is listed below throttle two, um, at a response curve. So this one's a little trickier. Here we go. Hope you got the camera set so you can see the, the, the little markers here and the handles. I went to linear interpolation because Catmull Rom is stupid for this, this job. Throttle's full forward is exactly what you think. Wide open throttle. Boom, let's go. It's on. Up at the top. Pull it back until it gets to the detent and you should be just above beta, just above. So in other words, drag the little beta thing uh, back a little bit 
to be just below, below uh, the, the bottom here. Because when you bring this back to idle, you don't want to be in beta. And if you just plug this thing in, oh, I'm sorry, it's not going to be quite right. You're going yeah. to need to do this. Oh, I would definitely do it, yes. So um, you want to make sure that your beta is below where this thingamabob, this handle is when it's on the detent. Because you do not want the airplane going into beta unless you pull it after the detent, you see? Because what beta is, is starting to go into reverse, reverse on the propeller. You do not want that in flight. I mean, like, totally don't want that in flight. So don't let it go into beta until you are definitely aft of that detent. So wherever the detent is, whoop, get that beta off to the left. Uh, let me do this on throttle two as well. And now everybody can see me do it again. So I'm gonna take the beta, drag it, see? The beta's just a little bit to the left. Because otherwise, if beta was up here, then every time I went back to idle, the prop would go into beta, which is a reverse pitch, and the airplane just go, Whoa, and it would just tuck under a nosedive. It'd make a weird sound, I guess. Yeah, it might start to go, Wow, it might, it might start to make that noise, um, but it, the drag would be so high, it would just tuck under and drop the nose and face plant. So um, don't want that. Now, here's the next thing. Let's go back to throttle one. Once you've pulled it aft of this detent, now you're going to what's called beta. It's in the real airplane. Let's say I'm the airplane, this is the prop, it's going this way. This is what you do, open the prop up and pull you forward, and this is what you do to you know, reverse the prop and push you back. Beta starts to bring the propeller backwards, but it brings the propeller backwards while leaving the throttle at idle. High idle or low idle, wherever you are, you are with the idle. Maybe, you're, maybe this is a high idle, maybe it's low idle, whatever the idle is, you know, set, that's what it is, that's fine. But whatever that idle is, having this propeller in beta starts to reverse the pitch while leaving the throttle alone at idle. And that's where the thing starts to go wow and make that, that cool growling noise that you absolutely get with that uh, awesome uh, epic aircraft. The Aerobasque, that awesome Aerobasque. Yeah, the epic. Yeah, G1000. epic Aerobasque uh, G1000 I love so much. Um, you totally get that sound. Um, and you really hear it in my airplane too when I fly. And do you, have I told you why we go into beta? Do you remember the answer? Why, why do we reverse that thing, leaving the throttle at idle? I don't remember that. Uh, here it is. A Pratt & Whitney PT-6, it has to keep the turbine spinning fast to keep up the insulating layer of air, right? The PT-6 has the fuel in the middle of the combustion chamber. If that, that, that fuel temperature is so many thousands of degrees that if the fuel combustion were to reach out and touch the engine wall, it would melt your engine immediately. So there has to be an insulating wall of air around the combustion to protect the engine from this like combustion you know, core, like the center of the sun or something like that. Just has to be surrounded by an insulating layer of air. The only way to keep that air up is to keep the airflow moving through, right? To keep that, that, that air insulating boundary layers to keep the air going through. In other words, you're, you're idling at 60% of your turbine RPM. I don't know exactly what it is in horsepower, I don't recall, but I mean, you're, you're probably idling at 40 horsepower, <laughs> okay? I mean, you're idling, then you're just going Whoop! And so whenever uh, friends come out, or, or, or you know, just people come out to watch me start my airplane, my Epic, or my, uh, my Evolution, they all kind of come up like this. And then once that engine starts running, they start backing away like, oh crap. Every kind of starts backing away, you can see their eyes, because, that, because when that, that thing is idling, been 40 horsepower of just air and fuel, so it's going Wah! I mean, it is screaming, and that prop is going Wah! So everybody just kind of slowly backs away uh, as that engine gets going. But, um... So you go into beta so you can idle it high, but, the, but not your plane isn't going forward. Right, yeah, so you don't taxi at 60 miles an hour. Right. Right, it's because I'd be taxiing at probably 50 knots if I didn't go into beta. Oh, everyone would. And so we bring it into beta to bring that kind of reverse in, just so the taxi speed doesn't get out of control. And maybe someone in the YouTube comments will say, well, why don't you just use the brakes? Well, I don't know, because I don't want to replace the brakes every week. Yeah. So um, you, you bring it into beta to uh, slow the dang airplane down. And so when you see these airplanes taxiing, you hear this kind of wow, wow, as he's kind of coming into reverse. And of course the engine stays at idle. Nobody wants to burn more fuel. I mean, you're already burning 25 gallons an hour on the ground. So, you know, you don't put any more fuel. Now, let's, so, that, so that's beta. And says so you pull it back after the stop, you're in beta. Now, at some point, you're going from beta into reverse as you pull back even farther. What do you think reverse is? Well, it's going to push you backwards. And how is it different from beta? Uh, the, the, the pitch of the propellers in the opposite direction. And? I don't know. You're not <laughs> idle anymore. You're dumping oh, in more yeah. fuel. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. See, beta is just reversing the propeller pitch at idle to minimize your fuel consumption. 
Reverse dumps more gas in while bringing the prop reverse even more because like I don't care what kind of fuel we're going to burn here. We got to stop this bird. You'd only use that for landing, of course. If you wind up using more fuel going into reverse to taxi, <laughs> and it's like the king is stupid, right? You know, let me add more power because I'm going too fast. I'll just make it in reverse. You know, you don't do that when you're taxiing, but when you're landing. If the end of that runway is coming up, oh yeah, you better believe you're going to dump a little fuel into there to spin that engine up, you know, with, with more reverse, and that's just that's just straight up reverse. So at any rate, that's the problem. Dots for that then. Oh, I don't know. Just put the reverse halfway back, I guess. I don't know. When it, so, I mean, this is something I every PT6 in the world is going to be a little different depending on how the mechanic dialed it in. You see, okay. a PT6 is designed for like a, a steam engine locomotive from the 1800s. There's all like these pipes and pressures, and you kind of tune and adjust and stuff like that. And I mean, whenever I go into annual. You know, I'll tell the mechanic, you know, I think it's bringing in a little too much reverse fuel, or oh, no, I'll give it a little more or less pitch, depending on how it feels and bait in reverse and stuff like that. And uh, so, no two PT6s are going to be exactly the same in the way they're adjusted. So just just toss your reverse halfway back in the simulator. That'll be as close as you can possibly tell to the real airplane, because it just means you're given a little negative pitch while leaving it at idle initially, and then you go all the way back. You come all the way into reverse. And then what we can do just to see if it's working right is we can go to data output and in okay apply okay go to data output and in data output go engine feather normal beta and reverse the engine mode boom check that and throttle actual boom check that these are the two ones lines 26 and lines 27 okay check lines 26 lines 27 in the data output lines 26 lines 27 you got the throttle and the mode up here and so right now here we go at full throttle then i'm going to come back and now we're at basically just about zero throttle two percent mike you want to zoom in on that so people oh, can yeah. see it Already okay done. good now yeah. i'm going to pull it back a little bit more i'm pulling the throttle after the detent oh what do you know the mode suddenly changed from one to two while the throttle is at zero what's happened beta exactly you're in beta it's still at idle the throttle is at zero, so we're sort of idle, but we're in beta mode. Now I'm going to pull, oh no, let's, let's make the, oh, oh, oh we'll, do that. we'll do that in a second. Hang on. Now we go back even more. Oh, we just went to mode three. What happened? The throttle's increasing now. And why is that happening? Reverse. Exactly. Now we're in reverse. Boom. We're up to 55% in mode three. Now we're in full reverse. So mode three is reverse, mode two is beta, mode one is thrust. Correct. You got it. Now let's, let's make this a little more instructive just for fun. Why not? Uh, let me see if I can find engine uh, propeller pitch. Boom. Propeller pitch, line 39. Line 39. Okay, so look, my propeller pitch is negative 2, and so I'm in alpha mode, or mode 1, which is normal flight mode. So the propeller is, just sits there just a, a hair let's after zoom. zero. We'll zoom in now. Are you zooming now? Zoomed. Okay, good. Okay, so the, the propeller pitch is negative 2. Now I'm going to go into beta. Oh, look at that. The propeller pitch is coming back more. You see, it's not negative two. Now it's negative five, even though the throttle is at idle. Ooh, now it's at negative, you know, eight degrees, just about still throttle at idle. Now let's bring this baby into reverse. What? And look at that. That propeller pitch is now down to negative 16. We're up to 41% throttle. These engines are screaming in reverse right now. Now we're in a King Air. It's a big, heavy beast. And so messing around the throttle like this isn't really moving us around on the runway. But if we were taking off or landing, it would sure, you know, I didn't have the, the parking brake on at, at maximum weight in the runway, the bird would be surging all over the place. And now we're back into alpha mode because I push it forwards. And yes, at alpha mode, this airplane is set with negative two degree pitch. I think that might be wrong, by the way. Um, I would suspect the real King Air has a flat pitch that's more like positive five, not negative two. So whoever entered this King Air may have, may have done so wrongly. Um, but, uh, I could also be wrong about my gut instinct on the King Air. So, uh, so anyway, that's how you set up the throttle. And uh, when you understand the basics I just went through, you can operate a Pratt & Whitney.